with what's going on in the world today. I think we could probably all use a little bit more peace in our homes, am I right? <laughs> so today I'm gonna talk to you about five ways that you can create a more peaceful homeschool environment. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids, ages four to 12. We have been homeschooling for six years. We're in our seventh year currently. And I love to just share here on this channel things that I've learned along our journey that has helped create a more peaceful and relaxed environment in our home in hopes that it can help you to do the same as well. So if you're new here, consider subscribing so you can get more videos just like this. Homeschooling is not always easy. <laughs> really, it can be really hard and it can be really frustrating at times. As the mom, we kind of set the tone for our home. And there are things that we can do and ways that we can just kind of help our kids to have an atmosphere where they feel at peace and at home and comfortable to really be able to get a good quality education while they are at home. So my first tip is don't try to do all the things. <laughs> It is so easy as a homeschool mom to get on Instagram or Facebook or read all these blogs and all these things and see all these incredible ideas of things that people do as homeschoolers. And we think, oh my gosh, I wanna do that. We need to do that. And then you see something the next day and you're like, I need to try that too. And then it just goes on and on and on. And pretty soon we end up with this list of things that is just overwhelming because we're trying to do so many things. And so my little piece of advice Advice is to just slow down, simplify, just find those few things that are gonna be the most important and focus on those things and give yourself permission to say no to things that might otherwise be good but maybe aren't the best for you in this period of time. My second tip is to focus on relationships over academics. And that can be a challenge because as homeschool moms, it's our responsibility to make sure our children are learning everything that they need to learn. However, when we get so focused on the checklists and all of the things that have to be done, it's easy to look over um, when they are just struggling with something and they need to take a pause or um, you need to work on some character development or different things like that. Um, if you're just working on that, that list, then those things can kind of get pushed to the wayside and you're missing the opportunity to work on the things that matter even more than the academics. You've been given the incredible opportunity this year to really build relationships with your children in a way that if you weren't homeschooling before, that maybe this is the first time in a really long time that you have the chance to just get to know your children and to love on them and to feed into them and build them and encourage them. And that, let me tell you, is going to go so much farther and last so much longer than the things that they're going to learn from math this year or language arts or any of those subjects. Subjects. The relationships that you can build with your children while you're homeschooling are going to be something that lasts forever. And let me tell you, it is worth it. It is worth it to press pause on the lessons sometimes if your children just need time to talk through something or they're struggling with um, a relationship with someone else that you need to help them through or something like that. Um, give yourself permission to pause the lessons, to wait on the checklist, and to just build relationships with your children. You will never, ever, ever regret the time that you spend investing in the lives of your kids. My third tip is to say yes more instead of just the reactionary no all of the time. It's easy when our kids just are constantly asking us, can I do this? Can I have that? Can I, can I, can I, can I? It's easy to us for us to just kind of have that knee jerk, no reaction. And oftentimes that we say it without even thinking about what they're asking. The idea here is to think through before you just automatically say no to whatever they're requesting, think through why not? And in, oftentimes, I have found that a lot of times I'm just saying no out of inconvenience on my part. Like, I don't wanna have to clean up that mess afterwards, or I just have so many other things to do and I can't help you get started, or something like that. Charlotte Mason said that education is an atmosphere, a discipline, a life. 
And as moms, we're kind of responsible to create this atmosphere where our kids are involved and where they're lifted up and where they're um, encouraged to learn and grow in the things that they need to learn about. And so if we get to a place where we give ourselves permission to say yes a little bit more, yes, you can hang upside down on the couch while we go over your spelling words. Yes, you can stay in your pajamas all day because we're homeschooling and that's okay. <laughs> Yes, let's play Monopoly for math today and we can learn about how to count and subtract and add money. I think there are just so many things like that that we can say yes to instead of just saying no automatically because we don't feel like doing it. We want to create that atmosphere in our homes where our kids are excited about learning because when they're excited about learning and they get to have some choice in what they're learning about, that's when education education truly happens where it becomes a lifestyle and not just something that has to be done between certain hours of the day. Because we want our kids to grow up to be lifelong learners where learning is fun and it's exciting and they want to challenge themselves and they want to grow for the pure joy of learning something new and developing themselves in a way that is different than how they started out the day. So say yes a little bit more and I think that it will go a long way in creating that peaceful atmosphere in your home. My fourth tip is don't compare yourself to other or more experienced homeschoolers. It's easy to get into that comparison game where we see everyone's highlight reel on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. All we see is people's accomplishments and we don't see the hard days and the struggles that they face. And then we start to feel less than because we're living in the day-to-day -day messes that seem to happen when there is more than one person living in a home. <laughs> and trying to get something done. It's okay to look to other people for sure for inspiration and ideas, but if it gets to the point of you feeling like you are inadequate, then maybe it's time to take a pause on where it is that you're finding those things from. There are certainly a lot of people out there who have been homeschooling a whole lot longer than you or I, and it's easy to look at them and think that they have it all together, and we expect ourselves to be where they are when we're just getting started. The reality of that that is, is that's just not possible because it takes people years, really years to get in the groove of figuring out what works for them. And what works for you might not work for me and vice versa. So don't compare yourself to others because really you need to figure out what is gonna work best for you and for your children because everyone is different and everyone learns differently and everyone has different ideas about things that they need to focus on in their family. So just put that in the back of your mind to if you start feeling um, discouraged because you're seeing other people do so many great things then turn that off for a little while and just look back at the things that you do really well because everyone does something really well we can't all do everything amazing right that I mean that would be like superwoman <laughs> and I would sure like to be like that but I'm not but I can do read alouds with my kids really well I can do devotions with my kids really well or maybe you are fantastic at art and you do really good at art and you need a little bit of help with someone helping you to do math with your kids or something like that we can't all do everything great so it's okay make sure that you focus on the things that you do really well and don't just compare everything that you do against someone else's successes. My fifth tip is to give yourself grace. There are going to be days where you do feel like you've failed or where there have just been meltdown after meltdown by you or the kids and it just feels like a wash and those days are the days when you need to remind yourself that it's okay. We have been forgiven so many times by the Lord above, and we can extend that grace to ourselves as well. Keep in mind that the Lord has equipped you with everything that you need to do this job. And we're not always gonna be perfect. We're not all rock stars, but there are also gonna be days when you are just at the top of your game and everything's going right. And you just wanna shout from the rooftops that you had a great day. And so remember that those days are coming. Give yourself grace for today and say, it's okay, 
I'm just gonna pick myself up tomorrow and try again. Because all we can do is take one day at a time. And you know, the Lord only gives us what we need for that one day. We're only promised today. And then we need to just trust Him that everything's gonna work out. Not only that, our kids learn from us, from our example. So when we f get frustrated or when we struggle with something, they see how we react to that and what we're gonna do in the midst of those times. And so use it as a learning example as well. If you are struggling with something, if you've yelled, because <laughs> who hasn't done that before? <laughs> Ask your kids for forgiveness model that humility for them and then move on and work together because it's amazing how much grace our kids give us that we often don't give them credit for. They are pretty amazing. They're resilient and they're gonna love you no matter what. And so pick yourselves back up by those bootstraps and try again tomorrow and know that God is gonna carry you through and that it's all gonna be okay. So that's it. That was my five tips on how you can create a more peaceful environment in your homeschool. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, that maybe you've been encouraged by something I've said here today. If you have, please give me a thumbs up below and share this out to anyone else that you think might be struggling or might be able to use a word of encouragement for them as well. I appreciate so much your time that you've spent here. I know you have so many other things that you can be doing and I truly honestly appreciate the fact that you have taken this time to watch this video. So thank you. I hope you have a really great day and be blessed in your homeschool journey. Bye-bye.